Hi, and welcome to Game On. I'm your host, Joey Baham. On today's show, we're talking baseball with all-star coach Brandon Bateman, summer camps with Chad Como and Kerry Diaz, but first up from Rivertown, Hottie Glorioso. So sit back and get your game on. <laughs> All over you hear this about cities. Well, here in the city of Kenner, we call it Rivertown. And here to tell us all that's going on in Rivertown, Heidi Gloriosa. Heidi, welcome to the show. Glad to have you back on. Thanks for having me. How's things going in Rivertown right now? It's going very well. It's been very busy uh, as we get into summer or into spring and early summer. Lots of school groups uh, looking to take field trips. So we've been very busy with that. You've been busy with it, right? Yes. It's been a while since I've seen you. Christmas went fine. Christmas Village went well. Uh, I think people finally caught on that had moved to Rivertown from uh, City Hall. So we had a lot of people attending. We had snow that year. So it was uh, a lot of fun. I got gotcha. you. And recently, um, y'all had the Italian Fest. We did. We just had the Italian Heritage Festival. Uh, a lot of people attended that. It was beautiful weather. So that was another big event. And it was through the whole river town? Uh, it was most, mostly from Short Street up until 4th Street in the main parking lot across from the Rivertown Exhibition Hall. But they had different bands playing every few hours, lots of food and drinks, so it was a lot of fun. So more and more people are finding out about Rivertown. Yes, a lot catching of on. That's, that's great, because, you know, like I said, I travel through a lot of cities, and mm -hmm. it's all the old towns are coming back. And, you know, what a, what a, what a great place we have right, right. out here. Mm -hmm. uh, your Exhibition Hall and Heritage Hall, how are they doing? Those are doing very well as well. Um, we're packed with dates every weekend, pretty much through the end of 2013. Don't have many dates left, but uh, lots of weddings coming up, birthday parties, all kinds of different functions. And if, if anybody wants to look for forward dates, you know, future dates, should I say, they can call you and see if anything changes or anything. Yeah, they can email me. My email information is always on the website, or you can call the Rivertown number at 468-7231, and you can check a date and see if it's open. Yeah, because a lot of people pass right down Williams and never realize what, what they got right, right in here. Right, With, you know, rentals and all that. Two very big facilities, uh, like I said, big enough for weddings, birthday parties, baby showers, everything. That's great, great. Your museums, how are they doing? Museums are doing doing good. Uh, we've had a lot of field trips, like I said, and uh, just recently we had a very big public event um, back in March. We uh, cooperated with Channel 12, WYES, and we premiered the feature-length movie for Sid the Science Kid. So we did a red carpet event that day. Um, everyone got to walk the red carpet with flashes of photography going off. So uh, it was a very good event. We had about 300 people that day. Wow, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. okay. Overall, good good premiere? Yes, very good great, premiere. Great, great. Are the museums going on right now? The museums are open, yes. We're still open to the public on Saturdays. Um, we do different shows in the planetarium pretty much every hour on the hour. So right now our schedule includes um, a laser show, uh, which is fairly new. It's called Laser Eye Pop. It includes a lot of pop music that kids will recognize today. Uh, we have songs from Justin Bieber and Katy Perry in that show. So the kids always get really into it, and they can sing along. Now that's being done at the planetarium, correct? At the planetarium, yes. We do now, that show on Saturdays at 11 and 1. Now y'all have an astronomy day coming up. We do have Astronomy Day coming up on April 20th. Uh, we'll have members from the Pontchartrain Astronomy Society come out. Uh, they'll have telescopes set up in front of the planetarium. If the weather's good, they'll have special filters on the telescope so you can view the sun, um, see some solar flares, things like that. Uh, we will offer a discount admission um, to our sky show that day at 3 p.m. It's the Hubble Vision Show, so it tells you all about the discoveries of the Hubble Space Telescope. And we will have $2 off of the tickets that day. Okay. Uh, they'll also have lots of activities and um, NASA handouts for the public as well. It's going on right down the street. Right down the street. That's, that's great. Mm -hmm. Now, you got some summer, summer events coming up. Yes. Tell us about Music in the Park first. Okay, Music in the Park. Uh, it's a repeat event. It's really caught on. We'll get hundreds of people out every Friday evening in May. 
Um, it's held in Heritage Park, which is the parking lot or the park right across from the planetarium in Rivertown. So every Friday and evening in May from 6.30 to 9.30, we'll feature a different band. Uh, they just do a free concert. We'll have food and drink for sale as well. And we also invite craft vendors out uh, to set up in the parking lot. So um, we have a lot of fun with that event. Now with the craft vendors, uh, should they contact you before coming out? Yes, they should contact me um, at the Parks and Recreation office and we can see if we still have slots for them. And um, if someone brings their own ice chest, food, that's no problem, is it? Uh, no outside food or drink is allowed. Okay. Um, that's okay. how we keep the concerts free, is by selling concessions um, ourselves. So we'll have everything you need to enjoy the concert ready for sale out there. How long do the concerts usually last? Um, they go on for about two hours or so. Like I said, they start at 6.30, they end at 9.30 or so. Um, lots of people out there. Um, our schedule includes um, some repeat bands, but also one newcomer. So on uh, May 3rd, we'll have the Yacht Pack to kick off the concert. Uh, May 10th will be Category 6. May 17th is the Refugees, and this will be the first time that they're playing at Music in the Park. Uh, May 24th is Groovy 7. We've had those before uh, for one of our Lundy Gras events, and they drew a, a very big crowd. And on May 31st, to cap it all off, we'll have the Top Cats. So. Bring it down with them. Yes. How is parking around for the... Uh Parking, um, we always have that big parking lot right across Williams, across from the Exhibition Hall. That's a very large parking lot. Um, and all the side streets, like Minor Street, Short Street, you can always park along there as well. So it sounds like a pretty good time. Mm -hmm. Lots of fun. And you have movies in the park this we year. We also have movies in the park. Uh, we tried that last May as well. Every Saturday evening would feature a different movie uh, in Heritage Park. A couple of our movies got rained out last year, so we're hoping for good weather this year. But uh, again, that will happen every Saturday evening in May. So we've tried to pick some different movies. We have a couple of animated features, but also a superhero film. And we'll also offer Grease as our last movie, uh, kind of a pop culture classic. So, and that's going to coincide with the car show also, if I'm not mistaken. Right. On May 25th, we'll feature Grease. And um, showtime is usually about 8 p.m. when the sun starts to go down. But on that particular day, we'll start off about 6 o'clock with a classic car show um, brought to us by Crescent City Cruisers. So we'll have just a lot of 50s music playing, all the classic cars. We encourage people to come out in their favorite 50s costume just to add to the fun. Right. So that'll uh, be our last feature on May 25th. Now, what does it cost for movies in a park? Everything is free. Again, we'll have concessions for sale, so that's how we kind of recoup our money. No outside popcorn, huh? No outside food, drink. We don't want to see nobody drink. sneaking right. nothing in that purse like they do at the movies, right? right? Okay. <laughs> no outside food, drink, or pets. Okay. No, no pets neither? No pets, no. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, again, parking, same like for music uh, music in the park. Right. right? Uh, we don't get as many people for movies in the park, so parking's even, even better for those nights. Again, by the exhibition hall or any of the side streets around Rivertown. Okay. Anything else going on in Rivertown right now? I mean, you feel there's in with a lot of stuff to do, but right. anything on the uh, horizon maybe? Or? Uh, just a lot of shows coming up in the planetarium. So if you're looking to book a summer camp or field trip, we're still open for that. Uh, we have a lot of dates in June and July still open. Okay. And if anybody wants to get in touch with you personally and, and, mm -hmm. and go over everything, your phone number. My number is uh, the Rivertown number, 468-7231. Or if you visit the City of Kenner's website and click on the Rivertown button, you'll see all my email information there as well. We can find out everything about you yeah. right there. <laughs> well, Heidi, as usual, great. Just anytime you want to come back, feel free. All right. Thank you for having nice me. Nice having you on. Thank you. We're talking... Leisure service camps after this time out. Kids are happy. What are we going to do all summer long? A kid's dream. Sometimes a nightmare to parents. Well, we have an answer for it. And that's our Leisure Service Camps. And joining us today, Chad Como and Kara Diaz. Kara? Hello. Chad, welcome. Thanks. Thank you all for coming back. Kara, real quick, how's things going at Leisure Service right now? Uh, things are going great. You know, our, our new online registration just, you know, it kicked off. It's, it's, it's amazing. So people are really getting on board with that and are finding it a lot more convenient to access our information and sign up for our classes. 
So we release our you know, summer activities already. So people are playing in their summers. They like to plan ahead. And um, we're ready. Class is filling up. They're starting to. Got a dance review coming up, too. We do. Good, good. Everything looking good over there, then. Yeah, we have dance review coming up. We have our completion, our in-house meet for gymnastics as well. Um, all of our you know, art shows, ceramic shows, things like that. So you know, the spring is is ending and summer's beginning. Are you all still expanding out some? I know last time we talked, you know, you were saying how y'all were coming in even to Rivertown more and more with, with classes and everything. Oh, absolutely. We're even adding, um, I, th I think maybe two extra fitness classes um, down in Rivertown this summer that are brand new that we've never had before. So you were really excited about that. Okay, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. It's always gl good to hear something growing. Oh, yeah. Summer camps. I just told everybody we got the answer for their problems this summer. Oh, we do. We do. We have lots of camps available. So we do have some specialty ones, um, you know, that you can you can find out some more information. So we do have, you know, some camps with, you know, ceramics and art and things like that. But um, and from gymnastics, cheerleading, all kind of stuff. But um, but today we really want to focus on our summer day camps. Summer camps. When, when are they? When do they start? Um, this year is uh, is a brand new kind of format that we're following. So we're starting the day after Memorial Day. So they're going to start on May 28th. We're going to go all the way to August 2nd. So, Chad, you're going to be busy. Very busy. You are the <laughs> on-site camp director. Yes, sir. Now, how many years have you been doing this? Uh, 17. 17 years. So, everything we need to know, you got the answers for like that. Uh, <laughs> now, don't lie, because we got kids watching. <laughs> I, know, I know pretty much uh, there's always something that comes okay. up, though. So, we got the date set. We did. Okay. What, uh, what activities do you all have at the camp? Well, we, we run our camp... Um, well, we always have a theme week. Every week is a theme week where it could be uh, 50s week, um, whatever the theme is, we, we have a um, uh, get together on Thursday of celebrating that theme. Uh, it could be sports week where kids, you know, uh, saints week or whatever. Um, on Mondays, it's, it's, we run a very strict, uh, not strict, but a very um, orderly um, schedule where on Mondays, we usually have somebody come in, they perform, or a, a, some kind of entertainment that comes in. Um, on Tuesdays, we do arts and crafts. Uh, this year, we're switching it. We're going to be going on our field trips on Wednesday. We usually have a big field trip we go on every, every week, and we're going on Wednesdays this year. Last year, we went on Fridays. Thursdays, when we have our celebration of the theme week, like I, I had stated, and then on Friday, we're going to be swimming. Wow. So it's not just... And, you know, I want our viewers to understand, this isn't just dropping your child off in the morning, picking them up in the afternoon. There's stuff going on all day long. Oh, it's, it's nonstop. What are the times, you know, through the week on the camps? I mean, the regular camp hours are, for, are from 9 to 3, but, um, but we do have extended care available as well. Um, we have before care that starts at 7.30, and then we have after care this year uh, is going to end at 6 o'clock instead of 5.30. So that's a little change that we're doing, too, to accommodate the parents that, that work a little bit later. Okay. Now, before I go any further, we, let's, let's touch on, on uh, fees. Okay. How much for the camp? Um, this year, it's $80 a week, um, and this year, your before care is included in the price. So the only thing that you would pay extra for is after care, and that would be an additional $10 a week. Okay. And uh, we used to have a registration fee that was a $25 fee. Um, there is no longer a registration fee. And we also no, no longer have non-resident fees, so it is... $80 a week, $10 for aftercare across the board, no matter where you live. Now, Chad was talking about different activities and all that y'all going to be having at the camp. Are there any extra fees, or is that included in the $80? Um, all of the activities are included um, that we do. The only thing that would be, uh, anything that would be additional would be, like, if we have, like, Smoothie King come and bring smoothies or snowballs or any extra snacks or concessions. That's the only extra thing that they would, uh, that we pay for. And, of course, it's optional. It's never required. But all of their field trips, um, activities, anything that comes to the camp, anything like that, everything is, is paid for. And I'm sure y'all notify the parents if there's going to be a, a cost that week or anything, if y'all doing anything so you know nobody's left out. Oh, absolutely. Great, great. Where, where are the camps held at? Just at one particular place? Uh, Butch Dewey Gymnasium. Butch Dewey Gymnasium. Mm -hmm. And uh, easy in, easy out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, outside activities. Outside activities. You were talking about swimming and all that. Will the parents have to sign? I'll get that out. Right. Will they have to sign any waivers? 
Um, they do sign uh, permission slips uh, forms each week. So we send them home each week um, stating uh, that we're going swimming and which field trip that it is that we're going, uh, that we're going on. So they do sign those in, in uh, grant permission, and they do have to have those on site for them to, to come with us. Now, when they sign up for one week, Carrie, mm -hmm. uh, is it all through the summer? They gotta, or do they keep signing up as it goes on? Um, they can choose how they want to do it. They can sign up for as many weeks as they want at a time, or they can sign up weekly. So whatever works for them. It's ever easy on there. So mm -hmm. through the whole, they can sign up when they come to register with you. On it. how is it going right now as far as attendance, um, you know, registrations? Uh, we just opened registration for the summer, so um, the the brochure just was released. So it's really only been going for an open for not even a week so far. So um, so we do have a couple of people that have came on board and already signed up for the whole summer. So some people do that, and, and then of course we have a couple of people that have come in and have just paid for, you know, like week one or week two. Um, so I mean, it's, it's, it's already out there. People are, you know, starting and getting their spots and getting ready for it. And, and the fees don't go up. If it's $80 for the first week, it's all the way through $80 per week, correct? Absolutely. Okay. Um, siblings. Uh, we do have offer sibling discounts, so um, it's ten dollars off for each um, additional child. So the first child would be eighty, the second child would be seventy, and then third would be seventy, and, and there on. And you know, one other thing, Chad, while we're talking activities, I, I want to, you know, you're the on-site camp director, but I'm sure you have other counselors. Oh yes, uh, we usually have um, anywhere depending on the on the on the campers. We have ten to, to twelve count, uh, counselors. They're each in charge of, of a certain group. Um, and they supervise and they go through training, um, first aid, CPR, all the necessary uh, training that they need to do. Ages? Um, our, our camp is generally from ages 3 to 12. Uh, we do have kind of like a camp inside of a camp as well uh, called the Kinder Camp. So um, the three to five year olds kind of stay together and they have their own room and they do some, you know, age appropriate activities. And of course they do blend in with older kids as well for some activities. But um, so it's kind of like three to five and then six to 12. But of course the, the whole range is three to 12. So it sounds like an overall good group. Oh yeah, it's great. And they, they stay in busy all day. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I think parents want to hear. You know, if I'm going to bring my child to a camp or have them somewhere for the summer, is it just going to be sitting in a gym all day long or active? And I think the activities are great that y'all do. I remember last year, y'all had a lot of success with the, with the activities. Oh, we do. I mean, we have great things that come to us too. So, you know, like they get to do the fun things like the bounce houses and the water slides and things like that. We have magicians, mazes, you know, all kind of cool things that come to the camp and all for fun things for them to do. We have water days where they can have water fights and, you know, things like that. Um, but, I mean, it, it's always different. Every day is an adventure. Do you ever have anybody that went through the camps come back and get on as a counselor? I was actually one of them. I, I was a counselor when I was in high school. Um, a lot of them actually have, have been, so um, it's pretty common. Because, you know, we hear that a lot through, you know, through your, your uh, dance instructors and uh, gym, gymnastics instructors. and it, It's good to see people get back into the program. You know, we have an athletics with guys coaching and women coaching that went through the system and now they back. You know? Right, I think the programs, you know, and kind of kind of speak for themselves. So I mean, if the if a parent, you know, signs up their child for it and like, you know, they kind of just they stay with it. They feel comfortable about it. They're passionate about it. And so it's time when they get older that they want to give back because they had such a great experience. And so I, I found that with myself, and I find that that it's not just me. It's kind of a repeat, and I'm starting to see that pattern with you know campers that are becoming old enough to be counselors and and things like that. And Chad's seen. I mean, with 17 years, I mean, I was a counselor with him. I was about ready to say, you know, 17 years being a counselor, right. got some, something's going on here, right. good, you know. And, you know, we've had so much success with the camps on the holidays. It's good to hear that the summer camps are getting ready to gear up, and y'all looking forward to that. Oh, that's great, yeah. Well, listen, hope it fills up. Uh, where can we contact? Um, you can, you know, if you have any questions or anything, you can give me a call um, at the recreation office at 468-7268. You can find all of our information uh, on summer camps and any other summer programs that we offer on the Kenner website. So that's, you know, at kenner.la.us. And then you can, um, you know, just click on recreation and then select leisure services. And all the information will be right there. And then that will lead you to the online registration as well. Good deal. Let's hope for a successful camp. Thank you guys for coming on. Kerry, as always, nice to have you. Chad, good Thanks seeing you again, man. You too. We're going to the baseball diamond after this time out.
And welcome back to Game On. I'm your host, Joey Baham. You know, it's amazing when we go to the ballparks at night and to the gyms and we see all the coaches and all the supervisors, but sometimes we forget about those kids playing out there. And you know, it's always our hope that after they leave recreation, that someday they'll come back and coach. Well, joining us today from Kenner Recreation Athletics, all-star coach, Brandon Bateman. Brandon, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. You know, I, I open saying that about people coming back into the programs. A lot of times, dads are your coaches, moms are your coaches. Right. But I get so excited when I see someone that grew up in the program now putting all he learned back into the program. And you played for Kenner Recreation Definitely. for some years, huh? Yeah, uh, I started out playing at Bush Dilly. Uh, played there for a number of years and then uh, went over to Highway Park. Uh, finished up there about 13, 14. So. You played all sports? I did. Played all sports uh, up till about 11 and 12 with football and, you know, just kept it with baseball after that. Any, anybody left an impression? Any coaches that you had over the years? Johnny Reynolds, uh, one of my first all-star coaches. Dave Fielding, and uh, most importantly, Conrad Bernard. You know, we had Coach Conrad on here a few years ago, and uh, he too was saying how nice it is to see players that he's coached and been around come back and put it back into the program. So you started out how old in recreation, roughly? Uh, five. five. Started with five, yeah, five and six-year-olds. And went all the way through? All the way through to the end of it, which 13 and 14. Anything you learned from those coaches that you're applying now to the team that you coach? Oh, most definitely. Um, everything I've learned, uh, especially with coaching from uh, Coach Conrad, Conrad Bernard. Uh, you know, he took me underneath his wing uh, about three years ago, uh, was his assistant for his 13s. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the 12s. Yeah, 12s. It, yeah, it was 12s. the 12s. And then um, following year, Coach Johnny Bergeron gave me an opportunity to get my own team at Gladys, 11 and 12s. And uh, we did, I had a good season with that. And then I got offered to start uh, coaching the 12s as a head coach. And I'm going to throw you a bone because I was out there watching you and it was exciting. Uh, Y'all wanted to win the city championship. Yes, we did. Um, it was very exciting for, for my first year as a coach. Okay. Um, as you, as you um, are out there now, what made you really want to go back and coach? You know, just seeing that a lot of the kids now are playing travel ball, and a lot's being taken away from the playgrounds. Um, I just wanted to go back and give give back, you know, as far as what I learned and, and really help the kids that are out there. Um, the, the best thing for me is seeing these kids develop from the beginning to the end of the season. You know, it's exciting to hear Coach say that, Brandon, because, you know, a lot of times we hear, well, I'm out there and I want to win a city championship and I want to do this. It excites me because, you know, I coached for years. Right. And, playground recreation and uh, the development of a kid means so much yeah definitely. To, to see that kid that can't swing the bat when he goes out there to first practice and see him get on base well you know that's that's definitely the payoff for me um, championship all of that that's just icing on the cake at the end of the season um, you know that's for the kids um, they see that if you can really start putting forth the hustle and the effort in the beginning of the season the payoff at the end could possibly be that, you know, and that's what we experienced our first year. All stars, different world coaching and playing. Yes, yes, a whole different world. Um, you know, you got to be involved in every single pitch, every single pitch, every at bat. So it, it gets a little, you know, it's a, it's a lot more pressure on you. But and, and, and I've seen you practices when somebody plays on your team, if they're at all star level or at recreation level, it's the same type of practice. Same type of practice. Um, I don't, I don't cut any corners, uh, whether they're beginning or they're they're excelled. Um, it's fundamentals from ground up all the way through. Why do I want to play for Coach Brandon? I just feel, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you my all. Um, I'm I'm gonna teach you the game to the best of my knowledge, to the best of my ability, and hopefully by the time you leave me, I'll have you ready for the next level. That's great, Brandon. I'm, I'm glad you're back coaching with us. That's why I have you on today. Good luck with your season ahead. And thank you for putting back into kind of recreation instead of just taking and going with it. I appreciate it. means a lot. It means thank a lot. You. Thanks for coming on the show today, man. Thank you. Good to have you. Thank you. Well, a little FYI, 
Soccer registration is going on right now, 5.30 every evening at Highway Park. Please get out there if you're interested in playing soccer. Joe Connor Vespri is a gentleman you need to see when you get out there. He'll help you where you got to go. Our soccer program is 4 years old or 14 years old. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please contact us at 468-7211, or you can email us at gameon at kenner.la.us. And as always, keep your game on. 